Johnny Carson, the legendary king of late night TV, who dominated the medium's nether hours for three decades, was born in Corning, Iowa, but moved with his family to nearby Norfolk, Nebraska, when he was eight years old. It was in Norfolk where he lived until he was inducted into the US Navy in 1943 that he started his show business career. At age 14, Carson began appearing as the magician the Great Carsoni at local venues. In 1962, Carson was chosen by NBC to succeed the controversial Jack Parr and his Tonight Show starring Jack Parr. Parr had decided to quit the show and begin a once a week show for NBC in primetime on Friday nights. Carson would never be controversial like Parr preferring to good-naturedly skewer politicians and celebrities in his opening monologue and staging stunts such as the on-stage marriage of retro singer Tiny Tim to his Miss Vicky in 1969. His popularity with the late-night audience became so great and the income from advertising on his show so profitable that in 1967, NBC had to lure Johnny back to late night with Johnny Carson after a walkout with a three-year contract guaranteeing him a minimum of $4 million. In the early 1970s, TV Guide reported that Carson was earning $2 million a year, making him the highest paid TV entertainer ever a record he repeatedly surpassed, pulling down a then-record $5 million annual salary in the 1980s. Carson created a sense of intimacy with his guests and audiences that made him the unvanquished king of nighttime TV. Countless talk shows hosted by the likes of Joey Bishop and Dick Cavett and other non-talk show programs were launched against him year after year, only to fail, with the notable exception of ABC News Nightline in 1980, halfway through his reign. His tempestuous love life, which included two high-profile divorces, became the fodder of such celebrity staples as The National Enquirer and later People magazine. And he was even the subject of a Roman A. Clef pulp novel in the early 1970s. There have been at least seven published biographies of Johnny Carson. After brief stints on radio stations in Omaha and Lincoln, Nebraska, his career was exclusively in television, starting with work at Nebraska TV stations in the late 1940s, which preceded his 1951-53 skit program, Carson Seller on Los Angeles station KNXT-TV. Attracting the attention of the industry, he was hired as a comedy writer for the Red Skelton Hour in 1951, which provided him with a career breakthrough when Skelton was injured backstage and Carson substituted for him, delivering his first monologue before a national audience. This led to a stint as the host of the quiz show, Earn Your Vacation in 1954 and the variety showcase The Johnny Carson Show in 1953 and in 1955-56. The man who would soon become the most famous late night TV personality in history hosted the daytime game show Who Do You Trust from 1957-62 to teaming up with longtime sidekick Ed McMahon in 1958. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. Before his triumph on Late Night with Johnny Carson in 1962, Carson tried his hand at dramatic acting, appearing in Playhouse 90, Three Men on a Horse in 1957, during the inaugural season of Playhouse 90. In 1960, he shot a pilot for a primetime TV series, Johnny Come Lately, that was not picked up by a network. Carson had sat in for The Tonight Show host Jack Parr in 1958, and when Parr left the show four years later, NBC chose Carson as his replacement, taking over in 1962. Late Night with Johnny Carson in 1962, Sidekick McMahon's Here's Johnny introduction of Carson became a cultural catchphrase, 
memorably reprised by Jack Nicholson and Stanley Kubrick's The Shining in 1980. Also, Woody Allen's character in the Best Picture Academy Award winning Annie Hall in 1977 as stand-up comic Elvy Singer, who was recognized in front of a movie theater by a street tough due to his appearance on The Tonight Show. Aside from his banter with celebrities, he amused his audience for 30 years with broadly played skit comedy by his mighty Carson art players and his spoof clairvoyant Karnak the Magnificent. He made memorable put-downs of politicians and celebrities, a format that was used by his successors Jay Leno and David Letterman and legions of comics who came after him. When a joke bombed during his monologues, Carson would do a wounded double take as the audience jeered, fully aware of the awfulness of the joke that he had just unloaded. Following these bombs with a sly, self-deprecating remark engendered a sense of intimacy between Carson and his fans. A liberal in the increasingly liberal age of the 1960s and 1970s, so powerful were his opening monologues that by the early 1970s, he could actually affect society at large outside of the pop culture realm. A joke about a shortage of industrial grade toilet paper caused a national panic and a run on all grades of toilet paper with a resulting shortage of the product about which he had kitted. Playing off current events such as the Watergate crisis, his comic evisceration of President Richard Nixon was credited with some critics as exerting such a drag on Nixon's approval rating that it made his resignation possible, if not inevitable. After Carson's reign, it became increasingly de rigueur for politicians to appear on late night TV talk shows and bear a host's jibes in order to stump for votes. Carson's connection with the American culture was so absolute, it contributed to one of his few failures, the rejection of The Tonight Show in the early 1980s by British audiences, who could not understand the topical references of his monologues. And his audience identification of Johnny with The Tonight Show effectively stopped him from working in other media. In the mid-1960s, Carson's agents wanted to trade on his vast popularity to position him in motion pictures as the new Jack Lemmon, but Carson never made any forays outside of television. His connection with the movie industry remained his hosting of three generations of stars and his memorable turns as the host of five Academy Awards telecasts from 1979 to 1984. In that role, he is generally regarded as the best successor to longtime Oscar host Bob Hope. He did stretch his wings as a producer, his Carson Productions producing TV pilots and series, TV movies, and in addition to his own talk show. The six-time Emmy winner considered a follow-up to The Tonight Show, but nothing caught his interest and he spent the last decade of his life in a quiet retirement in Malibu, California, as befitted his private nature. Thus, it was The Tonight Show that remains his creative legacy. Unlike every other TV star, he remained on top until the very end, and the show winning its rating periods every year for 30 years. When Carson retired, his last appearance was one of the highest rated late night TV shows ever. I have an ego like anybody else, Carson told the Washington Post in 1993, but I don't need to be stoked by going before the public all the time. Frederick D. Cordova, the producer of The Tonight Show, throughout Carson's 30-year run, believed that Carson never pressured himself to launch a follow-up, as he already had achieved unprecedented success on TV. He is one of a kind, was one of a kind, D. Cordova said in 1995. I don't think there's any reason for him to try something different. Carson, who was suffering from emphysema and had quadruple bypass surgery in 1999, died peacefully at the age of 79 on January the 23rd, 2005, surrounded by his family and friends. 
in terms of career longevity, popularity, peer respect, and impact on the medium, Carson ranks with Lucille Ball and Jackie Gleason as a television great. I am one of the lucky people in the world. I have found something I always wanted to do, and I have enjoyed every single minute of it. Johnny Carson. Now it's time to hear from you. What are your favorite memories from The Tonight Show? Is there a recurring guest that Johnny used to have on that you particularly enjoyed watching? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.